Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie, and if you are new to my channel, hi, welcome. I hope you consider subscribing. And if you are back, welcome back. Today, I'm here to do another whip and chat with all of you. Whip stands for work in progress, and chat stands for chat. <laughs> so uh, what this means is that we will just be hanging out and catching up a little bit. Feel free to work on a project while you listen and or watch just whatever your heart desires. I'm going to be working on a diamond painting and uh, just chatting a little bit about what's been going on in my crafting life and personal life here this past week. Um, and yeah, so let's settle in for your chat. Go ahead and whip out your whip and let's get started. So um, what I'll be working on today, if you haven't guessed already, uh, I'll be working on my cross stitch conversion to a diamond painting. Um, I'm going to attempt to do this for the first time in a whip and chat. Uh, I've been a little bit nervous, even attempted it for the longest time, just because I'm not totally sure how well I'll be able to read the cross stitch chart on my Kindle um, or my fire. They don't call them Kindles anymore do they? Uh, on my fire tablet, I don't know how well I'll be able to um, read the chart and chat at the same time. So if this starts to crash and burn, I'm just going to swap this project out for a different project while it works. So you might get to see more than one. Um, but the artwork that I'm doing a conversion of is Dragon Race Into the Night. The artist is Rose Khan. I purchased the cross stitch chart itself from Heaven and Earth Designs, and I sourced the canvases and the drills from Cooper Diamonds. Um, and I'm using a Fire tablet uh, so that I can use the Pattern Keeper app for tracking my progress. So as far as what I'll be using with my kit today, so uh, this is a tray. <laughs> Actually, it's a resin tray from July Arts Resin over on Etsy. This is a shop that was recommended to me, and I unboxed this along with another new tray uh, from a new to me company in a small shop haul a week or two ago. And I had promised that I was gonna make sure to actually try this out in a whip and chat. So uh, we will see how this goes. I'm so curious, but how cute is that? I kind of thought, well, it's consistent as well as far as like the fantasy element goes. <laughs> uh, but this pen, I don't know if you could really see it. The super sparkly swirls of purple pen is from Monarch Designs, Y-E-G, again on Etsy. And then this pen is from Black Wolf Woodworks. So super sparkly. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say, do I have the multi-placer I want? Love this one so much. And then uh, these minders, uh, this one was a gift from my dear friend Sandra. Um, and it's, of course, it's a dragon. <laughs> and I love all the intricate details in it. This is from um, Saban cover minders on Etsy. And then I don't have any up themed diamond painting kits, but I just was in the mood for a happy Doug minder. Up is like my favorite Disney Pixar movie. Um, me, yeah, it's a cute little Doug. This is from Galloway's gallery. And then wax wise, I haven't reached for these in a whip and chat recently. So we're going back to some of my kind of old favorites. Um, Randa's crafty corner her scented putty and then this is not your mama's mud i use this in my multi-placer and this in my single placer so let me go ahead and pull up pattern keeper and get us situated now these cover minders aren't actually going to serve a, a practical purpose <laughs> in this particular women chat because of how i you'll see how i fold back the canvas to work on but they're going to keep us company and i love showing off accessories in any way that i can so this is kind of where I left off. We're going to pick up here, but here, cover minders, you hang out with us over here. Okay, cuties. Ooh, except don't. <laughs> magnets, y'all. Magnets. All right, let me get my pattern keeper open and all that. Um, how are you guys doing today? I hope you're having a really fabulous start to your week so far. So, okay, hopefully this section actually has some color blocking in it. So hopefully... Um, Hopefully it's not going to take too much brain power to work on. Um, and you'll be able to see a little bit of the chart, but like not enough that I think that it's problematic because you're not supposed to show cross stitch charts because, you know, you purchase like the license to it. To be totally honest with you guys, though, this is <laughs> such a massive project that like a little 10 by 10 square is not, I think, going to tell you very much. <laughs> but I don't want to break any rules, you guys. I'm not here to, to make trouble. So... Um, I know I have this kind of like piecemealed here because of where this uh, cover was cut. But if you're curious 
to find out more about this particular project, by the way, um, I do have a playlist dedicated to it. I will link to it below in the description. If you would like to go and take a look, feel free. So let me grab a color and we'll get started for real this time. <laughs> this tray is going to be interesting to work with because it's very, it's large. So I'm curious to see, okay, how do the drills line up? It's like my usual tapping method is working a little bit differently. That's part of the learning curve with new, new trays, right? They are lining up though, especially up there. So anyway, um, this kit, this project, by the way, if you're looking and cause it's driving me crazy, even just like looking at it, <laughs> um, if you're like, wow, look at that, like gapping, you can literally see the grid lines. Oop, I have to sneeze. Or do I, is it going to do the thing where it just like goes away? I think it is. Okay. Where you can see the grid lines and whatnot. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. Um, these diamonds are unfortunately not um, super consistently sized. I'm running into issues with some popping and um, where they're not consistently sized and where they're wanting to shift and stuff. That's why you're seeing a lot of the gapping. And they, even though they are popping, they actually, because they're inconsistently sized, they actually don't sit very tight. And so that's why you're seeing some of that gapping, but that's okay. I, I did discover that sealing as I go does help quite a lot. Um, I will have to like go into detail, maybe I'll like show how I'm sealing it in my next update video. Um, but I, on the recommendation of like lots of people <laughs> and doing a bit of research, I discovered that like, oh, the Minwax, like polycrylic sealer is the one that everyone seems to recommend. Um, unfortunately it, I couldn't find it in stock anywhere. I couldn't even get it on Amazon. It was very strange. Um, and so I poked around and was like, oh, apparently the, there was a different kind of Minwax that was supposed to serve a similar purpose. So I... I did a thin layer of that on what I had completed so far, and it seems to be doing the trick. But <laughs> thank goodness for that, because otherwise this would be really stressful to work on. <laughs> um, yeah, so resin trays look... Okay, that did the trick. Okay, so tilting this way and tapping on the back, that... Okay, that helped. Okay. Um, resin trays are really, really beautiful, but sometimes they are a little tricky to work with for diamond painting. And so often I'll use resin trays to kind of like corral my accessories and whatnot. So anyway, um, I have been actually today in particular, I've been spending a lot of time with this kit. So it's currently Saturday, um, April 2nd, happy April. <laughs> um, and since uh, I knew that I was just going to have a quiet day at home with the kiddos and Adam was going to be gone for most of the day. I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and take over the kitchen table. And um, since the kids and I are kind of just having a chill day at home, like I'll do plenty of hanging out with them, but I'm just going to take over the kitchen table and work on this as much as possible. And that's been a lot of fun. I don't know why, because this is such a like bigger project. Like, it's a bigger deal to like set up and stuff. It's like a whole thing. Um, sometimes I feel a little bit bad about like setting it up at our kitchen table and um, taking over. <laughs> so I um, felt like today was a good day for it. And so that's what I did. Um, Adam is, he went to WonderCon today, um, which is like, it's put on by the same company that puts on Comic Con in San Diego. Um, but it has a little bit different focus. I would love to go with him next year when childcare is not, um, prohibitive. And I had told him, I'm like, you could, you go, like, it's completely fine. Um, like it's more like his jam this year. Anyway, we've gone to comic con together a couple of years. Um, but only did we go just once since we've had kids. And then, you know, there were two years off because of the, the Ronasaurus. Um, but yeah, so he went to WonderCon today. Um, and he did, he picked up a souvenir for me. You guys, you guys, this is fantastic. Um, 
did any of you guys play the Kingdom Hearts games? You know, like the Disney plus Final Fantasy, basically. <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys, he got me a Keyblade from WonderCon. <laughs> it's, it's made with like, um, it's like really, really lightweight. It's like some kind of like really durable, like thick foam or something. If you're a cosplayer, you probably know like exactly probably what it's made out of. Um, but he like texted me from WonderCon and was like, hey, I got you a souvenir. <laughs> and I was like, are you going to tell me what it is? He's like, no, you're just going to see it later. And I, <laughs> I came home from bringing up a drive-up order and there was literally a keyblade sitting on my kitchen table. And I immediately wanted to like have that moment where I referenced Brave and was like, no, bows at the table. <laughs> I'm not going to attempt a Scottish accent. Apparently we're just doing lots of like, Disney and nerdy references in this whip and chat. So I hope you're here for it. <laughs> Stay tuned. I'll find more. Um, uh, so anyway, um, by the way, do you guys, do you hear that? Do you hear that sniffle? I'm trying to keep it at a minimum. I wish I could make this up. I really, really, truly wish that I could be making this stuff up. Um, my kids got me sick. They finally passed on their virus to me. And I was just like, we were almost out of the woods. It's really kind of driving me nuts that it's slowly making its way through each of us. Like first, Micah had it. And then it's like a, a full week long virus too. It's such a pain. First, so Micah started it. He gave it to Connor. And then Connor was on like day five or six, and then I got sick. Like, what the heck? We were so close. Um, probably him coughing into my open mouth. Like, I think that that probably did it. Mike has been giving me open mouth kisses. Like, it, I, I, but I thought, like, okay, I've dodged it for two weeks now. Surely I'm in the clear. Nope. <laughs> so. I'm so not here for it. Um, someday my family will all be healthy. Um, did I tell you guys? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I told you guys that I asked our, I literally asked our pediatrician, like, do I need to be worried about my family's <laughs> immune systems at this point? And she was just like, no, <laughs> if it were a bunch of like bacterial stuff that you're taking antibiotics for, then yes. But no, this is just really bad luck. Um, and, you know, people not wearing masks anymore because that's no longer the thing. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's kind of a bummer. <laughs> but I guess I'm glad I didn't get tickets to WonderCon because I wouldn't have wanted to go because the symptoms of this mimic so strongly the symptoms of you know what. And I don't want to be the cause of other people having, like, scares of the thing <laughs> and all of that. So, anyway, I'm going to – I guess I <laughs> – thought I would just explain all that up front. So you're like, Katie sounds sick and she's sniffling and she's doing all these things. Well, that that's why. And I, I do apologize, but <sighs> okay. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay with this whole like reading across the chart and chatting at the same time. But like I said, there's some color blocking in the sections. So that's definitely helping. Um, I am over halfway done with this panel. Um, I'm at, what does my app say? 15.15, 15.15% completion on the entire chart, not just this panel. Okay, that like emptied out super well. That's a thing, other, another thing that happens with resin trays is that often if the lines aren't cut very cleanly, sometimes the drills will get stuck, but no, those, those just came right out. Perfect, awesome. Okay, next color. Oh my gosh, I should have brought over a tissue. Shoot. Okay. Um, so uh, last week's Whip and Chat, it was really fun to hear you guys share about in the comments your thoughts on, like, are you a uh, someone that crafts based on your mood? Or are you more of like, a, I make a schedule and stick to it? Or I like go with the format of like events and stuff like that. And I realized cause there were some of the things that people were saying, like in the comments, um, I realized, I think that maybe some people thought that I said something that I didn't say. Cause I had people talking about moon crafting. I mean, there was also like a thing with the word moon that we'll get to that later. Um, 
because <laughs> I know all of you like perked up like, oh, she can announce the thing. No, later. <laughs> um, so that could have been it. But I just was like mood with the D. Um, I had asked in there, like, do you guys like, do you have to like be in the mood to work on a particular kit? Like, are you fickle? Like it, one day you might be in the mood to work on a particular kit and then the next day you're not feeling it and so you have to work on something else. Or when you're thinking about what kit you want to work on next, you're like, I just need to be feeling it. Like I need to be in the mood to work on that particular kit. It was interesting to hear that most of you that responded anyway, uh, definitely you craft and or diamond paint based on like what you feel like doing. So I'm not the only one. I wonder if part of that is just like what's soothing to our mental health. Cause I know a lot of uh, people that gravitate towards diamond painting do so because it is like soothing and regulating for their anxiety or their, you know, depression, other aspects of their mental health. It's just a really good way to quiet your mind, I feel like. And um, so I wonder if that's also part of it is, you know, our mind needs to feel like it's wanting to work on a particular particular project in order to do so. Um, I'm definitely doing that a lot with this this project in particular because I'm so intent on not burning out <laughs> uh, that I'm like super in tune with my feelings about this one. <laughs> um, I don't think that's a bad thing. <laughs> finish the rest of the section there's a little bit of confetti it's just like two different colors down here I'll tell you, tell you what though when I was like up there where I was doing like part of one of the dragons like this dragon rider there was so much confetti oh my gosh a single section of like 10 by 10 diamonds would you know that would have like 100 squares in a particular or 100 drills in a particular sectioned off square there'd be like easily 50 different colors just in there and so yeah that was <laughs> <laughs> that was a, a mental challenge. Those sections went a lot slower, but that, that is okay. Um, speaking of like mood and crafting, I was struggling hard because I didn't have any strong feelings about what kit I wanted to start uh, on April 1st. So I knew that I wanted to participate in the Halfway to Halloween event that my friends Jacqueline and Jamie are putting on. So they are, Jacqueline is Diamond Art Sparkles. I did find out after the fact that I mistakenly referred to her as Drills or a Girl's Best Friend on Instagram. Um, they're both good, really good friends of mine. Uh, and so I just was like, my brain is fried. Like if you find one, you'll probably find the other. But anyway, uh, no, Jacqueline is Diamond Art Sparkles and Jamie, um, is Jamie underscore paints. I'll link to both of their Instagram accounts below, but they had been chatting and had thought like, why should we wait until, um, October to work on our Halloween kits. Like we have all these Halloween kits and Halloween accessories and everything in our stashes. How fun would it be to do like a halfway to Halloween event where we could pull out all of those things? And so sure enough, they decided to to do it. And I think we talked about it a little bit in my Patreon live and lots of people were like, oh, can I join it? Um, so this is an open invitation to you guys as well. If you have Halloween kits in your stash and you just maybe you're thinking I'm not gonna be able to work on all of them in October anyway if you're in the mood to work on them feel free to pull them out and join along now of course I want to make sure you know that it's not a formal event at all I would call it more like just a diamond paint along they're calling it like a non-event <laughs> literally it's just a hey you want to work on a Halloween kit with us cool come on join us <laughs> not like a okay there's gonna be an entry and there's not there's not prizes there's not entry forms there's nothing it's literally if you want to join us, post on Instagram and use the hashtag and we can look at each other's Halloween projects as we go. So I'm here for casual non-events like that <laughs> right now. But I was having an incredibly difficult time deciding on a painting. Let's work on I had narrowed it down to three and I had posted in my Patreon I put up a poll and was like, which by the way, yes, small plug, mostly because it's a really good time for me to plug this because it's the beginning of the month. Um, I do have a Patreon. If you're interested in seeing 
lots of fun like behind the scenes stuff. I do like a weekly vlog where you get to see, you actually get to like see my kids. You get to see lots of behind the scenes stuff. I share very candidly about all the things. Often there's tea that is spilled. Anyway, if you're interested, I will link to my Patreon below in the description. Please don't feel obligated. I still share a lot here on my channel as well, but it's, it's a nice chance to be a part of a smaller knit, like a tighter knit and smaller community. Um, and I really enjoy it. So feel free to go and check it out. I'd love to have you. Uh, the reason that the beginning of the month is a good time to bring it up is because they charge Patreon charges on the first of each month. Um, and so signing up at the beginning of the month is just an efficient way to do it. Um, you get access to all my past vlogs and stuff too, which is fun. Anyway, um, I put up a poll and was like, hey, help me decide. Because I do that a lot where I'm like... You guys can help me decide on content and kits that I work on and stuff. But here's the really hysterical thing to me is that I swear without fail, every single time I put up a poll, it ends up as a tie. I just laugh because then someone will come along and break the tie. And then within like an hour, someone else will come along and vote and it's a tie again. And I just am like, I adore you all with my entire heart and whole being. But oh my gosh, you are massively unhelpful when it comes to these polls. I feel like, are you guys doing this on purpose just to tease me now? <laughs> um, so anyway, that's what happened with these kits. And I finally, I actually just showed them to my husband. I was like, Adam what kit should I work on? It was like, that one looks really cute. Do that one. I was like, okay, thank you. You were more helpful than my Patreon. <laughs> um, and he laughed. He was like, glad to be of service. Uh, so I'm working on Moon Owl Magic from Diamond Art Club. I, the jury's still out on if I'm going to do a second Halloween kit for Halfway to Halloween. It's just going to depend on what I'm in the, in the mood to work on. <laughs> there aren't any other events this month at the moment that I'm planning to take part in. I mean, that could always change, but for the moment, you know, I'm just gonna, gonna see. I have a couple of a little bit larger kits in my stash that I might try to work on, like that are from companies that I haven't had the chance to try out yet. And I have just sort of this personal goal that I want to be trying out. Um, canvases and kits from a variety of different companies or if companies make upgrades I want to try them out and stuff like that so um I want to leave some space and kind of margin for that yeah those really did slide right out and just a couple up there um yay this tray is fun it's cute it's a little it's a little tricky to work with just because it's so big it's a little bit unwieldy but that's that's okay I'm so sorry for the sniffles you guys I'm really really sorry <laughs> Um, okay, next color. We're going to finish up this row. Um, but yeah, so I'm not totally sure what the rest of the month is going to look like. Um, I'm just going to browse my gems flow and see. So, eh, no. Okay, that was a mess. But yeah, I'm loving the halfway to Halloween event. I worked a little bit on that kit yesterday. So it's Saturday night. I did say that earlier. I worked a little bit on the Halloween kit yesterday on April 1st. But then, like I said, all day today, I've been working on this one. So, uh, but Moon Owl Magic is a smaller kit. And uh, so that I think will go like relatively quickly. And I'm not feeling like a big crunch to <laughs> work on it and get it done. And I'm like, I'm in the mood to work on the cross stitch conversion. Let's do that. Anyway, other fun updates that are going on. Um, like I said, the kids got me sick. And sadly, um, even though I wasn't ever planning to go necessarily to WonderCon this year, Adam and I did have tickets to go to the Bridgerton experience up in LA tonight. And I, I don't remember if I mentioned this in my whip and chat last week. I don't think I did. Um, we had tickets to go up and to go to that with like some of his film friends. And as soon as I got sick, because when did I wake up sick? Thursday morning? Wednesday morning? I just was immediately like, if this is the same bug as the kids have. Oh, it was Wednesday night. I started getting sick on Wednesday evening. I got that like really awful, like, um, what's the word for it? Like that just really all over crummy feeling. It's, a, it's just this body aches and just like almost hazy feeling. There's a word for it. Malaise, maybe malaise. Um, that for me like that, I, I don't even bother taking my temperature anymore. Cause I'm like, I have a low grade fever and it's on its way up. That's what that feeling is. 
And as soon as I got that and my throat started to feel a little bit sore and um, all that, I was like, shoot, if this is the kid's bug and it's a week long bug, I mean, hopefully it's going to affect me differently, but I might not be able to go to the Bridgerton experience because I don't want to get other people sick. Um, if I'm coughing by that point, because for both my kids, the last three days, three to four days was a wet cough that sounded real suspicious. Um, I was like, I'm not going to be able to like go out in public, even masked with this. I just wouldn't feel right about it. And people are going to be side eyeing me the whole time anyway. So, um, I just was like, Adam, <laughs> as soon as I got sick, I was like, Adam, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be, end up being able to go. I think that there's a good chance that if this is the same bug as the kids have, I'm not going to be able to go to the Bridgerton thing. And he was like, do you want me to um, also plan not to go? He's like, because I totally will. And I was like, no, you go. Like, it's fine. I don't, Anyway, I don't know if the tickets are refundable. Like, go hang out with friends. Have fun. It's really fine. Like, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not that any type of way about it. I'm not like, oh, if I can't go, then you can't go. And you have to stay home and suffer with me and be sad. Like, no, go have fun. Tell me all about it. See how long it's going on for. Maybe we'll get tickets and go like together again another night. <laughs> um, we have been watching Bridgerton season two. Don't worry, zero spoilers, I promise. No spoilers here whatsoever. Um, we have been watching season two. We're moving slowly because we're trying to enjoy it, but we did just finish the fourth episode, which I believe is the halfway point. Are there eight episodes in this season? I'm really thoroughly enjoying it. Um, and I love so much that my husband is enjoying it really every bit as much as I am. He... It's funny because he sometimes he can be a real movie snob and even like TV snob. But then sometimes he's like, I'll enjoy like a good like romantic, like romance genre, like movie or TV series. If like the characters are interesting and like I like the story and stuff like that. And he's like, I don't know. Bridgerton just I like it. Um, he like watched all of season one. I think he started it maybe before I did. I was like, hold up. <laughs> you're watching Bridgerton? I'm going to watch Bridgerton too. <laughs> like we can talk about it. Um, and then I watched all of season one in like one day. It was glorious. Um, season two, we're watching together though. Cause I was like, I'm going to watch it together. Um, and like, like I said, we're both, we're really enjoying it. I'm just, my light source is blocked. So I'm like, please tell me I'm cutting in the right spots. I can't totally see through this solid white paper. I don't know if you guys saw how I, how I work on this piece. So I had just finished a column. Um, I'm like doing a column of a page on the chart. And then I go through and as you can see, I folded it over. Um, cause the, the chart itself is gridded into 10 by 10 squares and the blank canvas has these, I don't know how well it shows up in camera. I didn't very well when it, I worked on, uh, when I did the update video, but there's these, there's a blue line here and there's a blue line here. It's every 10, there's a thick blue line there. You can see it really well right there. Um, and so those blocks match the grid on the chart. And so, yes, this is a partial block right here because that's where the this page ended. It's if you don't know cross stitch terms, you're probably like, what are you talking about? This is all like recently learned information for me too. Just, just go with it. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I like fold over all the columns and then do a cut so that then I can come back through and fold it over. Anyway, <laughs> well, how much you cared about the full explanation, but you got it anyway. Anyway, so please tell me, are you guys watching Bridgerton? And um, if so, again, no spoilers here at all, I promise. Um, Adam and I had a really interesting discussion last night. Um, oh, crap. Uh, we had a really interesting discussion last night about the male characters on the show. Um, and we kind of landed in a little bit different places on it, to be honest. And so I'd be curious to hear your guys' thoughts. So he pointed out, he's like, I feel like, so this show takes a lot of, like it goes ahead and embraces a lot of the romance genre tropes. Like that's part of it. Um, and I'm like, yeah, like there's so much, there's, there are quite a few moments in here that you're like, this is such a rom a romance, a romantic trope. And I was like, but that's what it's about. Like, I feel like the audience for the show, the intended audience is women. Um, just like romance novels are targeted f at women. Um, and, uh, so then 
Adam was pointing out, he's like, I feel like he's like the female characters seem to, for the most part, be really well-rounded and interesting. He's like, but, and, and distinct in a lot of ways, like really have their own distinct characters and everything. And then he said, but I just feel like most, if not all of the male characters have this like almost oafish and like dense oblivious personality type and he's like I really felt like that was the case in season one especially he's like but it just feels like they're just doing a repeat of it he's like it's it's bad writing when the drama in a show is just caused by like if they just would have talked about it he's like that's manufactured drama he's like I don't know that this the show is not like doing it as egregiously as some others and he's like in a lot of ways it avoids that like trope and so we were kind of going back and forth and I was trying to say I'm like part of it is to me that it is a guilty pleasure that like yes there is some manufactured drama because it's a slow burn like there are supposed to be these moments of like I was like, the tension is so good. Like, it's so delicious. Like, it's, and it's, but it's very much a guilty pleasure. I don't look at the show and go like, this is the most well-written show I've ever watched. And he was trying to say, he's like, that's not what I'm saying my expectation is. He's like, I just think the show is doing so much else well and it's doing so well at taking this whole genre and this whole like setting and giving it like some really interesting modern twists and taking out a lot of the like problematic elements of the time like the racism and the um like even some of the sexism to a point um he's like it just feels like it goes a little bit beyond he's and i think his problem is that it seems like all of the male characters like the male leads seem to be portrayed in this way like like I said, kind of like dunces, kind of oblivious. And I was trying to say like, I don't necessarily get that same read. And then I was like, I don't know, maybe part of it is that that's just, maybe that's the indulgent thing. And me, and he was saying he thought, yeah, that it was just inconsistent with the rest of the show's writing. He's like, this seems like a strange oversight for them, given that like they've been so thoughtful and intentional about so much of the rest of it. So um, anyway, curious, what do you guys think of the male characters in Bridgerton or just in general, like male characters being written as that, like, we're just emotionally stunted and oblivious, basically. Um, yeah. So that was a really random tangent. Adam and I love, love, love digging into like deeper discussions about stuff like that. Like he's, I mean, he's a screenwriter, um, like by, on the side, like he has a day job <laughs> and then he moonlights as a screenwriter. Like that's, and, and doing all things like movies and film, like that's his dream is to someday just be literally screenwriting full time. Um, but, uh, we really, really love just having those like kind of more interesting discussions about like digging into stuff like that. I know that's not everyone's cup of tea. Like you don't, I've heard people say like, I don't want to analyze movies or TV shows or whatever, because it takes away the enjoyment for me. And I, um, I watch TV shows or watch, go to see movies because I want to be entertained. Um, like I hear that argument a lot, but for us, part of the entertainment is like those discussions after, and it didn't used to be my thing at all, but because I love Adam and this is something that he adores, it's something that I really made an effort to get into. And now I love it too. <laughs> We've been watching a lot of Star Trek Deep Space Nine as well. And it is fascinating to me because that show aired in the 90s, like mid to late 90s, I believe. And um, we are always like talking afterwards about like the ethics that it digs into. Like it's not afraid to like dig into the hard topics. And sometimes you don't get like really neat closure at the end. And we've talked a lot about how like the Star Trek shows, which yes, it's nerdy, but please stick with me. Even if you're like, this isn't my thing. Um, it's fascinating to me because the different Star Trek shows have in a lot of ways been really ahead of their time. So for example, like on the original show, 
it was a huge deal because they had a black actress um, in one of the lead roles and her exact position of, of her character on the show, like her role, um, it was considered groundbreaking that they cast a black woman, both of those things <laughs> being key. And, and I believe, was it that show that had like the first interracial kiss that aired on television? Like it was considered way ahead of its time. And even like this show that we're watching, uh, we're watching Deep Space Nine. Once again, I like there have been episodes we've watched. That I've, I've turned to Adam and gone, this aired in the 90s and this show still went on for four more seasons. Like they they show in one of the episodes we just watched in season four, there's a it's very chaste, but like there's a kiss between two women and my jaw hit the floor. I was like, Adam, they got away with showing this in the 90s. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? And then so that spun off into a whole like conversation about like, well, here's the context of the times. Like Ellen hadn't come out yet and like all this and that and the other thing. And I am such a sucker for like digging into different like I love understanding how things work and why they work the way that they do it's like give me all the background info let's go deep diving on IMDB and Wikipedia like it's fascinating to me fascinating to me um I haven't brought this up in quite a while I have friends like to give me a hard time about this because I used to say this a lot but if you're into the Enneagram (laughs) if you're new here you haven't heard me mention it Um, I love personality tests and the Enneagram is one kind of personality test. I'm an Enneagram five. I love researching and getting all the information about all the things. It just makes my brain happy. Um, It just helps me understand the world better. (laughs) So, um, oops, wrong spot, wrong spot. (sighs) Okay, this is double-sided adhesive. And so drills don't necessarily want to slide, but I've kind of figured out how to make them slide anyway. If I need to, just like in cases like that, I'm like, ooh, shoot, that was one off. (laughs) Um, I know some people, by the way, when they work on their heaven and earth, when they work on cross stitch conversions like this, they'll actually grab like a Sharpie or something and they'll put dots on the canvas. Like they'll look at a section and then they'll be like, okay, I'm going to mark each of the places that that color is going to go. And then they go back and place the drills. Um, But I feel like because I have it working in just like these little blocks of 10 uh, by 10, I'm able to just kind of, I just eyeball it. It works for my, works for my brain. Anyway, that was a really, really, really random tangent. Um, And I love it. (laughs) I'd love to hear if you guys are super into uh, like diving into stuff like that with TV shows or movies too. It's, it's really fascinating. Um, Actually, let's open up the section because there's just a couple of that color right there. Um, anyway, other things that have been going on. So, um, with the kids, Connor, uh, we got to go to, uh, his post, his official like post surgery, um, his follow-up with the surgery team. And I got to like talk with the surgeon that actually like did his surgery and she got to see Connor. And to me, it was almost like, it was this really emotional moment. Cause I was like, she literally has not seen Connor like in good health, you know, like just when he was in the hospital and she didn't necessarily see him a lot when he was recovering at all. Cause that's not really surgery team. Mostly just the doctors do like the surgeries, not a ton of like the follow up in the hospital. Um, but seeing her, it was kind of surreal. Oh, son. No, I just spilled a bunch of diamonds. Okay. At least it was on the cover. Okay. Everything's fine. I'm really incredibly klutzy to Ooh, sorry. Let me back up here. Let me just scooch these over. You guys can't see what's going on. That is okay. I fixed it. Everything's fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it was neat to see her. A little bit emotional. Um, Connor was happy to like show her his belly. And he did great with them just kind of, you know, checking everything out. Making sure he's healing great. And they gave him a clean bell of health. Yay. Uh, said he's, you know, they're considering him basically like, full, oops, sorry, fully recovered. Um, at this point, that mostly just means like, okay, restrictions are lifted. He can start running in PE and stuff like that again and running and playing at recess. Um, they did caution us because I just asked again, um, what can we expect as far as kind of the long-term implications of this? 
And, you know, again, because I know I've asked this of them multiple times, but I just need to hear it again, confirm. Um, they have no reason to suspect that any, that the, you know, growth that caused this in the first place, there's no reason to suspect that he would be susceptible to that at all. No reason to expect that this might happen again. Um, they just commented that he will be at slightly higher risk of, um, intestinal blockages due to scar tissue this is intestinal blockages are different from what he had. It is actually a different thing. And I don't think it usually requires surgery. I'm not sure. But they just basically gave me like the red flags to look for with that. And they said it's still going to be very low risk, but that is going to follow him for the rest of his life, unfortunately. Um, but I mean, this was literally the only option to, for, for, for him, like the surgery was, um, and so it's a little scary to think that, you know, he has this slightly higher risk of like this thing now for the rest of his life, but we know what to look for. And hopefully it's still not like a high risk, you know? So anyway, it was nice to like get that. What is happening here? Um, that clean bill of health from the surgeon team and for it to be like, okay, yay, you're back to normal um, or, you know, fully recovered and all of that. So that was... Um, uh, that was exciting. Um, he has a trip with Adam coming up. They're going to travel across the country. Just, just he and his dad, uh, he and Adam are going to fly out and visit with Adam's sister and her kids for a bit. And that'll be a lot of fun. Adam and Connor got to do a trip a couple of summers ago together and it was like really, really special. Um, and so I'm excited they're going to get to do that again. Mike and I are going to stay home. Micah is still tricky to travel with, to be honest with you. And um, also, like, if if Micah and I went, it would just be kind of a different vibe on the trip. And I think this will just let um, Adam get some really good time in with his sister. And for, the, for Connor and his cousin, who are, you know, pretty close in age, to have some really fun time together, too. So... Um, it overlaps with Connor's spring break, so, you know, that works out well. And then Mike and I will just have some some mommy Micah time here at home. Um, as far as Micah goes, he's been doing pretty, pretty well. He's happy to be back in school, and um, oh, his speech is still really slow to improve. I need a couple, of, I need to check in on a couple of things here. Um, I have to follow up with our insurance because... I think that they billed us incorrectly for his speech therapy. But if for some reason it is correct, we can't, af then we can't afford his speech, his private speech therapy right now. Um, so I have to dig into that, but I, I just am feeling, I'm trying not to feel defeated by the fact that like he is so delayed that like potty training is not even like a practical possibility right now. Um, and I'm feeling some type of way just because he just, he had his birthday last week he is now a four-year-old and I feel like there's just something about like having a four-year-old that's not potty trained that that makes people start to look at you funny um and especially because you can't necessarily tell like at a first glance like no my child is nearly non-speaking like and he's autistic so um there's factors at play here um, speaking of autism, I, I'm not going to talk about it now because I'm really far into my whip and chat and it's a whole separate topic that I could spend a bit more time on, but April is what is more commonly known as autism awareness month. I am very much a proponent of this shift that's happening, uh, towards calling it instead autism acceptance month and really reframing how we as a society and as a culture look at autism. Um, I'll chat about more about that another day, uh, in another whip and chat, but I, I have feelings <laughs> about it that I'll dive into, but I will just in a very succinct way, I will just say that like with April being like an autism awareness month thing, I will just say autism speaks is not the, organization that you should be supporting or uh, donating to or using as a resource, I will link to, um, is ASAN 
is really like a fantastic resource to check out. And I'll touch more on this another t in another whip and chat so that I can explain. Um, but I will just say that if you're the kind of person that you like to donate to charity and to a good, a good cause, please don't donate to Aut Autism Speaks. They're highly problematic in a lot of ways. So anyway, I will leave it at that for now because I could really, really, oh, I could get fired up and um, I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> Uh, but you know what it is a good time for right now is to talk about our give backs. So first I would like to announce the winners of last week's give backs. And, um, once again, I'm filming this before the window has technically closed. So what I'm going to do is, um, say like, I'm going to share the prize names, then ask you to look at the screen for a screenshot. And that's going to have a, um, screenshot of the the winning comment and I will ask you to contact me by email. I will uh, verify your identity just to make sure that you are who you say you are and the right person claiming the prize. Um, so I had two prizes that I was giving away, away last week and this is if this is your first whip and chat you're watching or first video of mine you're like prizes what? Um, so I uh, reached 10,000 subscribers last month and I really wanted to do some give backs as I'm calling them. It's you guys, because you are the reason that I reached that personal milestone. And I just, I love paying it forward and giving back when I can. So um, first, let me announce the winner for the Crafties kit, which was the Moonlight Glow. And this was open to US viewers. And the winner of this kit is, look at the screen. <laughs> Yay, congratulations. And I also gave away a, I'm giving away a mystery accessories pack that is going to include at least one pen, one tray, um, some sort of wax alternative and a minder, possibly more, <laughs> but at least those things. This is open international and the winner of this particular prize from last week was, look at the screen again. <laughs> Yay, congratulations to both my winners from last week's. Now let me tell you about this week's give backs. So um, as always, I'm giving away two prizes. And uh, the first one here is going to be a Diamond Art Club kit. It is just going to be open to US viewers. Again, just for uh, sake of practicality with shipping and whatnot, I'm going to be giving away the kit Aerial Angel. This is from the artist Sarah Richter. I did unbox this video as a sneak peek a while back. I'll link to that video below if you're curious to take a look at the artwork itself or you're not sure which I'm talking about. Um, I do have permission from Diamond Art Club to give this kit away. Um, so no worries, it has been unboxed, uh, but everything, you know, all of the kit contents will be included and everything will be packaged with care and all of that. I do want to note though, that, uh, because you will be receiving this kit as a gift and that therefore means that you are not like the original purchaser or owner of the kit that does void the lifetime warranty from Diamond Art Club. So just FYI, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. The kit looks perfect to me, but I just always want to make sure that you are aware of that. So uh, in order to enter for this particular prize, um, can you please include the word? Let's see. We have Doug here. So dog. D-O-G, dog. Include that word somewhere in your comment. Um, please do not include the words giveaway or prize, um, but to enter for the kit Aerial Angel from Diamond Art Club, please include the word dog somewhere in your comment. Um, the second prize that I'll be giving away is open to both US and international viewers. I'm going to be giving away a $25 gift card to Etsy so you can support a small shop of your choice. Hopefully pick out some fun diamond painting accessories. Um, there's lots and lots of international diamond painting accessories companies opening up each, you know, it feels like every time I look or hear about it, there's a new one. So hopefully this makes this a fun uh, gift card giveaway for international viewers. So uh, to enter for this particular uh, give back, let's see, I've kind of had a theme uh, with these words. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, can you please use the word wax? W-A-X somewhere in your comments. And that will let me know that you are entering for that prize. You may enter for both if you live in the United States. Um, but you know, for example, if you're like, I don't really love the kit Ariel Angel, but I still would like to enter for the Etsy gift card because I live in the States. 
you're, you're welcome to do that as well. So anyway, best of luck. Um, just like the past couple of giveaways, this is going to remain open through next Saturday, which let me look at the calendar here. Uh, that's Saturday, April 9th at 11 59 PM Pacific standard time. I will draw the winners and announce them in next week's whip and chat. So best of luck to all of you. And a huge thank you to all of you <laughs> that have been a part of um, helping me reach this particular milestone. I am really, really grateful and I'm enjoying thoroughly doing these give backs with you all. So yay, good luck. Uh, back to the whip and chat itself. So things that I have kind of in mind and coming up. Um, I'm so sorry for the sniffles, you guys. I'm so, so sorry. I'm apologizing a lot because <laughs> I have t so many um, sensory sensitivities, particular like particularly auditory. Um, I have a really difficult time. Um, like if I'm watching a video where someone is doing a lot of slurping or chewing for some reason, like if they're snacking during their video or um, like sipping their drink really loudly or something, if, I don't know, it's like if they do it too often or really almost at all, I'm so sensitive to mouth noises. Misophania, misophania, I don't, I don't remember what the name of it is, but it literally, it makes my skin crawl like it makes me want to like oh my gosh like claw my ears off it's so it's awful <laughs> so i feel bad so i'm like i'm sniffling and so someone out there with misophobia is gonna be freaking out i'm so sorry look at this color blocking oh my gosh this is fantastic um this is like literally never happened in this kit so i'm, I'm loving it um this upcoming week uh so i have something really really exciting happening this week and I don't think I can really reveal it yet, but I will just say, keep an eye on my small shop haul. Um, I have a really, really fun collab that I'm doing with a small shop. And I am gonna be able to share about that in a video this week. I'm really, really excited. So keep an eye on my channel this week. It's gonna be lots and lots of fun. Um, hopefully my kids will be back in school for the whole week. Um, I had a blessed three days this past week where both of the kids were in school and I had like some time to myself. I had things like, you know, therapy on Friday and stuff, but I still had some time to myself and it was so glorious. It had been like two weeks, but of course, as soon as the kids were both back in school, I was sick. And so I slept a lot. So I just feel like garbage, <laughs> hot garbage. Um, but, uh, I'm hopeful that with the kids being back in school, I can get back to like doing some filming in the mornings. Cause I think I've mentioned that just mid morning light is my very, 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 very favorite kind of lighting. Um, to film in because I just have the perfect spot and setup to have indirect light that just works perfectly for filming um, as opposed to in the evenings. Not so much. Um, I'm curious, by the way, I was trying to figure out like how often are you guys interested in seeing me do progress updates on this cross stitch conversion kit? Um, because I know I got to a point where like, I feel like tons of people were like, when are you going to do an update on your cross stitch conversion kit? And it had been like a month <laughs> since I think I had started. And so I'm just curious, I don't know if, if you have thoughts, if you're like, wait until you, you know, hit a certain percentage of completion. If you're like, I want to see an update at least once a month, no matter what. Um, I, I'm open to it now that I want to make you guys create my content for me, but feel free to share if you have strong feelings. I'm, I'm open. Um, I have some unbox, at least a couple of unboxings, including a sneak peek coming your way this week. And I am going to try to do a post review. I finished my kit from Sparkle Queen Creations. <laughs> And I love how it turned out. I need to go check and see. I thought I saw her post something that was hinting at maybe some new releases coming soon or soonish. Maybe she was doing like a tester canvas or something. But I am going to be keeping an eye out because I really enjoyed working on that canvas and I'll definitely get another. Um, but yeah, so keep an eye out as far as what I'm going to be putting up this week. It should be fun. Um, but yeah, I think I am going to go ahead and let you guys go because I really just feel like my nose does not want to stop running and I really don't want to subject y'all to that. 
uh, any more than I already have. My eyes are starting to like water. <laughs> I feel like I need to like rub them. So I think I'm about due for some more Sudafed <laughs> and maybe an early bedtime. I just filmed my month in review for the month of March because I was like, okay, it's Saturday night. I know Adam is going to be gone. Like sees the Bridgerton thing up in LA. So let me try to knock out my whip and chat and my month in review video. Um, but I think my throat is telling me like, it's time to be done. <laughs> um, and my nose as well. So thank you guys for hanging out with me. You guys are the best. <laughs> um, thanks for putting up with kind of the like completely all over the place as far as topics go as usual. Um, I hope that you guys ha are having a really good start to your week, by the way. And I'd love to hear about how you're doing and, um, just what you've been up to and all of that. I hope you're really taking care of yourselves and enjoying maybe the start to some spring weather. Um, I don't, do you have April showers where you are? Or is it more like, no, we're in a drought. It's great. No, I'm being really morbidly sarcastic, but anyway, that's really is my cue to go. <laughs> if I'm getting that kind of silly. If you made it all the way to the end somehow, <laughs> why don't you leave a dragon emoji in honor of, this lovely dragon race into the night kit that we've been working on. This just ended up looking out and being a section with like oodles of color blocking. I think there's only been like two or three different colors this entire time. And so this has worked out okay. <laughs> I'm glad I was able to actually work on this particular kit during a whip and chat with y'all. But yeah, if you made it to the end, uh, dragon emoji, just because it's always fun to see who makes it to the end. You guys, I hope you have a really fantastic Monday or whatever day it is that you're watching. Please continue to take care of yourselves. Practice self-care when you can. Um, make sure you're getting lots of, plenty of sleep, drinking lots of water. Um, call your therapist, go to therapy, take your meds, do all the things to be taking care of yourself, okay? All right, my friends, um, I will let you guys go. Thanks for hanging out. If you made it to the end, if you're not all the, uh, already subscribed, you might like it here. So feel free to subscribe. I'd love to have you. Um, otherwise, thank you guys for hanging out. I hope you have a really wonderful day. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye. Bye.